What if what we knew about death was a bit stranger than fiction? Well, today I'm going to be going over one of the most haunted cemeteries in Oregon. I'm going to go over some of the cases related to this cemetery and see if maybe I could change your mind about what you thought you knew. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to find out some more creepy, interesting, spooky, scary facts, go ahead and grab a drink. If you got headphones on, turn them up to 11. If not 11, break that knob, just grab it, twist it up to 12, and join me as we discover one of the spookiest, scariest, most downright haunted cemeteries in Oregon, the Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery. Spooky! One of the things I really think is cool about this legend itself, or I should say one of the legends, is that even within the legends, they have different variations, different takes on you know what happened, small details here or there. Um, like the first one we're going to go over, it's called the Gypsy Curse. And that is that in 1886, a woman and her son moved into town, and they were being, I shouldn't say they were being, the town suspected them of being gypsies, and at the time, being a gypsy meant that, you know, you were, you carried omens with you, being a nomadic drifter, you just kind of, no good happened to them. Basically like the goat man, um, where, where, where a gypsy stopped off, something bad was going to follow, was the, the, the alleged, you know, omen surrounding them. Um, so when a man wound up dead and hacked to death, they pinned it on the gypsy's son. Now... There wasn't a whole lot of information or facts or evidence really going around that would even pin this on the kid. But at the time, you've got two corroborating sources that are saying, yeah, it was this kid. We saw him do it. Editor Chris here. Um, I'm noticing going through editing. Um, I've messed up a few times in this video. A um, couple corrections. The son, I refer to him as kid. He was an adult. He's an adult man, just the, the, her son, if that makes sense. Um, I do say take advantage instead of take for granted. And I think that's it. If there's more, my bad. Cut me some slack. Even if there was, you know, even if the mom saying, no, 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 he was with me. Of course, you're going to say that, you know, you're the mom, whatever they they're just basically gonna gonna hang you it's it's capital punishment right off the rip on the day that the son was gone going to be hung the mother uttered a curse upon the town in which that it will uh, burn to the ground like completely everything every building everything to the ground three times as of today I believe it has completely burned to the ground twice. So we've got one final time that it can burn to the ground for that omen to actually have come true. Not saying that it is true, not saying that the woman's even a gypsy, but at the time in 1886, which again, you gotta think, that's, you know, what is that? Over, over 120 years ago, almost 150 years ago. Times were a lot different. Um, people were a lot more suspect of shit. It wasn't as, you know, people weren't as homogenized as they are now. So if you have this little town, little community, and a woman and her son comes to town that nobody knows of, they don't communicate, they don't talk to anybody, they're going to immediately just be suspicious of these people. They're not going to trust them. Whatever bad happens, they're going to pin it on the gypsy and they're going to just do whatever they need to do. So shitty, but that is the first legend of the Lafayette Cemetery. Another legend of the cemetery is that of the Witch's Curse. This was actually one of the things that piqued my interest in even investigating the cemetery. And it's just, it's really eerie and really cool to even like kind of research and discuss. Um, we all know the Salem Witch Trials of the 1600s. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, it was a, a sequence of events. And by events, I mean brutal murders based on zero evidence. Um, Surrounded Salem, Massachusetts from 1692 to 1693. 
more than 200 people were accused of witchcraft. And, and by the way, an accusation of witchcraft could be as much as... she going to pick it up? No? She, she's just going to leave it. Witch. She's a witch. She's a witch. They're a witch. Hang on! But it really could be any kind of accusation, and if it were levied by a person in high regard, good luck proving your innocence and, and coming out unscathed. 30 people were found guilty of being a witch, 19 people were executed. Of those 19, 14 were women and 5 were men. Uh, these executions weren't your run-of-the-mill, run you know, hangman's noose or, you know, guillotine. Um, some of these included being burned alive, having a large stone tied to you and then dropping you in a lake. Needless to say, if you were accused of being a witch, you weren't going to have a good time. Alright, back to the legend. In the 1800s, an unnamed woman moved to Dayton, Oregon. Uh, this woman was pretty quiet, reserved, didn't really socialize with anybody in the town. Um, after a few years, a rumor started that she was a witch, and there, she was hosting you know, random rituals at her house, which is partially why she never really talked to anybody, because she's already got rumors circulating that she's a witch, that she's committing some crazy shit. Why would she talk to anybody? Kind of makes sense? That makes sense. As the rumors started circulating around town, they started assigning blame to her for anything bad that happened in the town. A lot like the gypsies. Uh, I shouldn't say the gypsies. A lot like how the woman in the gypsy curse uh, legend was. Uh, you know, missing livestock, blood sigils, flayed men. I made the last two up. After a short trial, she was convicted of being a witch and hanged for it. As she was being hung, the locals said that she uttered a curse upon the town that it would burn to the ground and that the ground would never yield anything. So, if we're to believe that that's true, she uttered a curse that was so severe, basically she salted the earth with her words, making it so nothing would grow, that it would become a barren wasteland, and that nothing would thrive in the town. Which is kind of intense when you think about it. Now we get to the fun part of the video where I get to speculate on what I think happened and, you know, plug in some stupid shit and just make myself look cooler and think that I know shit. Um, but what do I think really happened here? I think the 1800s were a time of a lot of unanswered questions. Um, back then, you didn't have the ability to verify information. So if you had a friend or a family member or a neighbor saying, hey, this person's a witch, look what they're doing. I had three chickens yesterday. I've only got one chicken today. Um, you kind of just had to trust the source unless you were able to confirm it and verify it yourself like that is something we kind of take advantage today is that basically with with our phones and shit we've got the entire world in our pocket we're able to have basically any any question answered within reason of course but during the 1800s with this it was uh, unfortunately having stuff like this and not being able to verify things probably led to a lot more bloodshed and violence than was even necessary especially right during the heart of the civil war of 61 through 65 and you know already not being able to trust people when you hear something like that you're not even gonna question it you'll be like okay yeah they're a witch why are they here hang them burn them kill them Fear of the unknown is a driving force for a lot of really stupid moves and dumb decisions throughout history, and unfortunately it ended in some tragic deaths and actions throughout time. If you think back to when you were a kid in school and there was a rumor about the house on the corner uh, with a tall fence and how a witch who eats kids lives there and feeds the bones to her dog, how fast did that rumor spread around school without any information to verify it? I would imagine probably within a week. And that is in a time where we probably had internet. That was only, you know, 10, 20 years ago, depending on how old you were. Go back a century now. You have that. What are you going to do? Oh, that's a witch. 100%. Like, the, no question. You would 100% believe that house hosts demon summoning rituals and human sacrifices every Friday night. And believe me, it's every Friday night. So I think that while there was some truth to the actions committed, uh, I believe that the theatrics of a gypsy or a witch's curse was too intoxicating for people back then to ignore, and they just ran with it because it made it easier to digest hating somebody for no reason. I've got to think back and kind of put myself in their place and rationalize it as if I was someone back then, and you have to sympathize with the fact they didn't know this woman. It's, it's a woman who comes to town, nobody really knows her, she doesn't talk to anybody. 
immediate suspicion. Like, what are you gonna do? Obviously, don't kill him. Like, that's that's not me saying, you know, kill him. Combine that with the peer pressure and public sentiment with the witch on the hill, and you can understand that they would accuse a woman of such a thing. Am I condoning it? Absolutely not. That's that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just a dude providing a bit of insight to the minds of people that existed 200 years ago. It's a tragedy of an innocent woman that was executed because the town deemed her a witch and gave her no day in court. It's shitty, but I think that gives us more time to take pause in an accusation instead of just immediately rolling with it, just taking a second, sitting back, saying, hold up, wait a minute, and thinking through everything first. All right, I hope you enjoyed the two legends associated with the Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery. I am going to be releasing the facts and the actual story behind the cemetery in a part two. This one was getting kind of long. I didn't want to delay getting a video out to you guys any longer than I already have. So I appreciate your guys' patience on this. I hope you're enjoying the format of these. I hope it, it shows that I put a lot of work into this and that I'm, I'm really trying to, to make sure that it's chef's kiss top notch for you boys and goyles all five of you i'm just I'm, I'm really excited to to continue on with this and keep putting out this kind of cool shit so if you enjoyed the video hit the like button hit the subscribe button and uh, leave a little comment let me know what you're thinking of the videos for now that's it for me and i hope you guys don't have to sleep with the lights on Fight!